Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a super exponential equation. I call this super exponential. You can also call this a tower problem or a tower equation because of the way x's are pretty much stacked. We have x to the power x to the power x and so on and so forth all the way up to infinity. And we have infinitely many x's and this whole thing equals e and we're going to be solving for x. So there are infinitely many x's. The million dollar question is, does this converge? Okay, converge meaning that do we have a finite value? So let's go ahead and consider this in a more general form. I'm going to show you how we can kind of manipulate the t this type of thing in the general sense. And then we're going to apply it to a specific situation as opposed to doing something else. So I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. Okay. So let's go ahead and set this whole thing equal to y instead of setting it equal to a constant. This is going to give us a more general case. And from here, hopefully you notice that in the case this converges, this, this exponent here is the same as the whole thing. Does that make sense? So this thing includes itself, obviously, infinitely many times. But I'll just take the x as a base because it's easier that way. So now, since the exponent is the same as the whole thing, if the whole thing is y, then this is also y. I hope you know y. Now this gives us x to the power y equals y. And then by raising both sides to the power 1 over y, you're going to be getting, I don't know how that y disappeared, by the way. I probably touched the pen, which erased it. But anyways, from here, x can be y to the power 1 over y. Great. So we were able to get x in terms of y, which is nice because, remember, our goal is to solve for x, and we just invented y, right? Great. So to be able to handle this problem or maybe look at it from a functional perspective, I'm going to go ahead and natural log both sides because I definitely want to bring this exponent down, especially when the exponent is a variable, that thing could be very problematic because none of the rules that you know apply, such as differentiation, right? And you can memorize it, but it's better if we natural log both sides. And then this gives us something nice because now we can go ahead and bring this down, right? That becomes a coefficient, giving, giving us ln x equals 1 over y multiplied by ln y. And of course, this is the same thing as ln y over y. Nice. So we were able to find ln x in terms of y, and there is no variables in the exponent. This is good. But, of course, we want to do something to this expression. What do we want to do? Maybe differentiate? No. You can differentiate it and kind of work with the uh, derivative and go somewhere from there. But I want to do something else. I want to go ahead and write this as ln x equals, since it's ln y over y, I want to write this as y to the power negative 1, which is the reciprocal of y, by the way, times ln y. So I kind of turn it into a product, which is better. Now, and then I just realize if I have a y to the power negative 1 here, I want to have the same thing here, but I don't have the same thing. It's y. Can I just raise it to the power negative 1 out of nowhere? No. But you can and just make up for it. So in other words, consider the fact that ln y to the power negative 1 is negative 1 times ln y. We can go ahead and switch this ln y to negative 1 times ln y to the power negative 1. So what is that going to do? I'm going to replace ln y with this, and it's just going to be the same thing. But notice that y should not be 0. ln y also says it should not be 0. And obviously, you probably guessed a stack of x's like a tower, an infinite tower, cannot be 0. Can it be 0 when x is 0? Like what is 0 to the power 0 to the power 0? That would be an interesting question. You probably know if you've seen my video on 0 to the power 0 that 0 to the power 0 is equal to 1. Guaranteed, right? Hopefully. But this is infinitely many, so that could be a different scenario. Okay? Is there an answer for that? That's a good question, something to think about. Anyways, so let's go ahead and replace ln y with that. That gives us ln x equals y to the power negative 1 times ln y, which is negative 1 times ln y to the power negative 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this negative 1, apply it on y to the power negative 1, or just put a minus sign. Or even better, I'll probably just put that minus sign. Should I put it on the other side? 
I'm not exactly sure, but here's what I want to do. From here, we get the following. ln x equals y to the power negative 1 with a minus sign, of course. I should bring that negative to the front times ln y to the power negative 1. Great. I think I want to transfer the negative over so that I can write this as follows. y to the power negative 1 times ln y to the power negative 1 equals negative ln x. In other words, multiply both sides by negative 1. That way, you can kind of get this into a proper format, which is the t e to the t, if you know what I'm talking about, that's the Lambert's W function. Make sense? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and write this first ln y to the power of negative 1, and then multiply it by y to the negative 1, but we're going to use the fact that ln, or should I say, what? how does that work? Okay, I'm trying to write y to the power of negative 1, so y to the power of negative 1 can be written as e to the power ln y to the power of negative 1, because if you have something like t, and that can be written as e to the ln t, makes sense? These t's are the same, so I'm using this as a t, okay? So, now we're going to multiply this by e to the power ln y to the power negative 1, and that's equal to negative ln x. At this point, we apply the hocus pocus uh, mathematics, and it is just applying Lambert's W function on both sides. What is Lambert's W function? Lambert's W function is basically, if you have something like t to the t and apply it, Lambert's W on this, you'll get t. In other words, it's the inverse function for t e to the t. Make sense? So when I apply it, this is going to be my t, so the output will be t, which is ln y to the power of negative 1. But then it's going to equal w of negative ln x. Remember, we're not trying to solve for y, we're trying to solve for x, right? Are we? I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> so at this point, you could probably do uh, something, you know, to this equation, so you can kind of get the x by itself, but let's go ahead and, you know, simplify this a little bit more. Maybe I can write this as negative 1 times ln y equals w of negative ln x. And finally, ln y can be written as negative w of negative ln x. I don't know if we want to leave this. You know what? I think it's going to be better if I leave this alone. But anyways, let me show you uh, because this is something that I wanted to show you first. And then maybe we can do the switch. So from here, obviously, y is just going to be e to the power negative w of negative x. So the, this kind of gave us y as a function of x because we had x to the x to the x dot 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 all the way up to infinity equals y. And now we got what this thing is. Make sense? Okay, I hope it does. But we are trying to solve for y. So it will be, I mean x. So it will be better if we were able to isolate x. And here's how we can do it, hopefully. I just want to leave this as is from here. I'll take it from here and then I'm going to go ahead and just write the W on the left hand side. This will be negative L and Y. And at this point, I just want to apply the inverse function for W. So what is W inverse? If you think about it, W T to the T is going to be T. So W inverse of T is just going to be T to the T, which is our original function, right? Sort of. So here, if you apply W inverse on both sides, you're going to get negative ln x equals, this is going to be my t now, so be careful, negative ln y times e to the power negative ln y. And then from here, hopefully you can solve for x. Anyways, I hope this was helpful. This is probably going to bring us back to square one, but here's what I'd like to do. Now let's forget about solving for x, and let's take it from here. Okay, so I think at this point... Let me see. Well, I don't think I want to erase everything. Yeah. So I'm just going to erase this part and now, and maybe the arrow, and let's go ahead and proceed with this. So I got y in terms of x, which is nice, because now I can replace, remember, my expression was turned into this, but y is actually e. So replace y with e, you'll be happy you did. Let's do it. Okay, great. We have a lot of negatives. Be careful with them. So this is going to be negative w of negative ln x, and I'm going to set it equal to e. Nice, right? Because now we have the same base, so what this means is this is e to the first, so negative w of negative ln x equals 1, or w of negative ln x is equal to negative 1. And again, applying w inverse, 
you're going to get the following, but W inverse of negative 1 is negative 1 times e to the power of negative 1, because that's t e to the t, remember? It goes negative ln x. The negatives cancel out, leaving us with negative ln x, or positive ln x, equals 1 times e to the power of negative 1, which is 1 over e. And then from here, since the base is e, x becomes e to the power 1 over e. Okay, great. That was a very long method, and I know some people are just going to complain about it and say, hey, why did you, why, why are you just beating around the bush? And let's get to the point, right? So, let's go ahead and do this. When this whole thing is equal to e, notice that this is also e, right? Then we get x to the e equals e, then raise both sides to the power 1 over e, and that's going to give you x equals e to the power 1 over e, which is the answer. But here's the thing. Is there only one solution to this? Can something converge to two different values? In that case, does, is it co called convergent? That's up to you. Decide. Okay, anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.